Well, good morning, folks. Happy Saturday. I've just nearly had a heart attack. So I come down to the unit this morning, drop Gemma off because she's working, and we find that the shutter doors are up and the padlock's off, and it's been left open all fucking night. Just imagine that. So, the young lady who was on shift yesterday is going to get a fucking bollocking because if we'd have had this lot robbed, well, that would have been it, wouldn't it? I mean, yes, we are insured, but fucking hell. Couldn't cover that. Couldn't cover that. So, uh, anyway, I've been up to the... I've been up to the pub this morning as well. I've serviced the glass washer. I've given it a, an acid, a chloroquest rinse through, and rinse, and then Persid 15 to get rid of some lime scale and... Uh, She's back in action, working like a little beauty again. I've also come in and put the caustic on again because I left it in the tank last night in the fermenter. Sorry, boil kettle. So I just put it back on again this morning. I'll just run up the steps, let you have a look. So this recirculating lock really does bring the kettle up nicely. Nice and shiny, spotless in there. So I'm just going to run it through the inlets. These two inlet ports here, I'll just go and connect it on the outside to the relevant connector. And uh, once that's had another blast through all the ports, we'll drain it down and rinse it off. And then it's ready for another brew. You can really see how nice and shiny it's bringing the elements up. Even though we've got them on tri-clamp, if you clean these right away, you know, you don't have to do it every brew. You don't have to pull your elements out every brew. And listen to that. Just listen to that. So we can see in here bubbling away like little beauties. Are they both going independently? Yes, they are. We better change this water out soon because I think it's starting to evaporate. But I'm very pleased. This is bubbling away nicely. So they're both at temp and they're both fermenting well. Well, I'm sorry I didn't get the camera out, but uh, our friend Mr. Dixon Windows has just been in and uh, I've just had a couple of pints with him, so I can now officially say uh, I am in breach of the Health and Safety at Work Act. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to enjoy a beer this afternoon now. It's approaching four o'clock. I haven't really got anything done. I didn't plan on doing anything. Uh, Gemma finishes at five, so I'm probably just going to shufty around. Might take a few readings of the gravity for the beer, see how the fermentation's getting along, have a bit of a tidy up in the shop. Uh, but it's Saturday afternoon. What do you do? I'm just gonna be chilling in the brewery. It's awesome, isn't it? I do feel like, I'm, I feel gratification from what we've achieved and where we've got to in such a short space of time. It's really quite good. I do have to figure out where we're going to put the beer though when it's finished fermenting because I don't have any casks. So I need to try and sort out some type of deal. I think I'm going to get in touch with uh, Crusader Kegs. I think they're the people, but if anyone knows where there's any cheap casks going. Uh, legit, of course, I don't want Keg Watch after me. Then uh, let me know, let me know. Righty ho chaps. Guess who I'm on the phone to? That's right, Mr. New to Homebrew Tom. We're just having a message conversation here, but I'm going to put him on mute for a second. Just while I relocate you boys, because we're about to take a gravity reading of the beers that we're fermenting. So, excuse me, Tom, for one moment. So, in here, we have a sample of Guile 1. This is the test batch that we did with the Ella Hop. It smells fucking amazing. I honestly cannot get across to you how good this smells. And I've tasted it a couple of times and I've tasted it every day, let's be honest. So what I'm gonna do is pour it into this pint glass. We need 500 milliliters for a sample. 
but in order to take a gravity sample with a hydrometer at this stage we need to degas it so in order to do that it's just a case of throwing it back and forth between two pint glasses like so just to remove any CO2 the CO2 will throw off the hydrometer reading of course which will result in an errant read there we go so we've knocked most of the CO2 out of that sample we'll pull our trial jar out and we will proceed to top it up vigorously we want to agitate all the CO2 out of there and then top up with a little bit extra that we've got same process just chuck it back and forth so the target gravity on both of these beers is between 1006 and 1007 of course using the hydrometers that we have from Stevenson Reeve we're able to get a much more accurate reading than 1006 or 1007 we can go a further power of 10 and go 1.061, 1.062, all the way up to 1.06, at 1.07, and so on. You guess, I guess you get where I'm coming from with that. So, I'm going to predict whether we need the specific gravity or the final gravity hydrometer considering this has been on since uh, Wednesday we did the brew so Wednesday night now Saturday I think we'll be closer to the final gravity so we'll get the FG hydrometer out now the scale on this hydrometer runs from 1030 down to 1 or 1.030 down to 1.000 I have to be very careful not to drop this because these are 50 quid a piece they cost me a lot of money they come from Stephen Reeve which is a company based in Scotland they actually make all the homebrew hydrometers as well but these ones are for they're called sacrometers and they are for the brewing industry so let's get right in on that and we'll have a good look at what we've actually got. So we blow off the bubbles and we can see that we're down to 10, 11, 12, 13. So 10, 13, 2. I'll make that. So we'll get our fermentation record and we are on day, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, day four. I don't know what the date is. The SG is 1.0132. I should take a pH reading, but I don't actually have a pH meter. I did have, but that went. And the temp, we'll take a quick temperature reading. And we should be about 18 and a half, 19 degrees. We're 19.4. Let's put up, get it into shot, lad. So we're 19.4 degrees in there. That's perfectly acceptable. We'll record that because we want to be taking these gravity readings at as close to 20 degrees Celsius as possible. Notes, tastes. great bingo so that's batch one let's then move on to batch two that's not batch two that's batch two Being as delicate as possible with the hydrometer, 
that's the first thing that we take out we rinse it from bottom to top top to bottom holding it by the bulb and not the stem never by the stem we drop it into its housing remaining vertically all the time you get this little sponge spacer that goes on the top and then the top case now we're going to get this out in 10 seconds time to use it again but for 50 quid I'm making sure I store these bad boys properly every time so that can go on the side now we get rid of the sample we'll rinse out our trial jar making sure that there's no residue of the previous beer there we are we do the same with the glasses that we use to mix and we'll just pop them on the draining board to make sure that they don't have too much water residue in there which will potentially not by much not noticeably but potentially throw off the reading and also I haven't tasted this batch so this smells much more malty than the other one considering this is only one day old so let's have a little taste Wow the taste difference from last night to today it's it's morphing into beer and away from work but this is still work in my opinion so we won't use the FG hydrometer or sacrometer we will use the specific gravity hydrometer or hygrometer no sacrometer because we're closer to the spe specific the original gravity the OG than we are the FG and that's noticeable by the lack of CO2 in the sample as we go through the degas process. Now the other one was much more frothy. I could only fit a third of a pint, two thirds of a pint into the pine glass to do this uh, because the agitation released a lot more bubbles. But the bubbles rang in about a bit longer with this because of the higher sugar content. So I'm happy that that's degassed. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's somebody who lives above the brew shed playing an electric guitar. They're shit. So we'll pour that in there. Pour this in there. And we'll just get a little bit more sample. Again, a good 10 chugs with the pint rush of degassers. beautiful so we get out this sacrometer now this is the one that we used to measure the original gravity with like I say always hold by the bulb where possible so this goes from uh, 1060 to 1030 so you can see that we've covered with the two sacrometers the whole spectrum from 1060 down to zero if we were going to ferment anything bigger than this I'd need to get the next scale which will go from 60 to 90 or you can even get off of these guys a scale which just has 10 gravity points on a whole sacrometer they're excellent so we'll just uh, just literally grab her by the top and lower into the trial jar just giving her a little spin as we let go and we'll see that we started the gravity at this beer, of this beer, yesterday at 10.36 was the target and 10.37.2 was achieved. So if we zoom in and blow off the bubbles, we are down now to 10.30, 1, 2, 3, 10.33.7. I would say on day two, 
1033.7. So overnight we've had a gravity drop of approximately three points. This one's reading closer to our specified fermentation target. If I can get this to focus, there we go. So we are at 18.6. The tank's set to 18.5, which is pretty damn good. We'll just record that on here. The other page, of course. Fermentation record, temp, 18.6. Nothing to speak of so far in terms of notes. And then again, we'll rinse off our equipment, making sure not to clink or clack it at the side of the sink. And then holding, holding it by the bulb, drop it back into its container. where it will live safely until next time. Well, so there you go, a bit of a bonus there. I didn't really anticipate giving you a tutorial on uh, gravity readings sufficient to satisfy Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, but there it is. You can see the accuracy that we're working to. It's, uh, point, it's 0 0.1, 10, duh, duh, duh. It's, based, it's effectively four decimal places on the specific gravity chart which will give us, really, really narrow down the ABV. Uh, the ABV content that we have to work to for purposes of HMRC is 0.1%. So the fact that we're measuring the specific gravity to four decimal places and then declaring the alcohol by, by volume to one decimal place is, uh, it just shows like, the, the due diligence that's going into this process. And with the scale on these sacrometers or hydrometers, whatever you want to call them, it makes it really quite simple to do. So there's no excuse for getting it wrong. Gaffer's in now, so I think we're going to wrap it up for the day. And uh, I'm going to just quickly show Froggy next door before he takes Gem off the shift. And then. Uh, well, I'm going to have a quick beer with them before they bugger off home. Well, before I bugger off home and leave him working, should I say. But it uh, been a nice relaxed day today on a Saturday for once, instead of uh, breaking my neck. Done the readings, showed you how to read SG on a big hydrometer, and uh, listened to Metallica while I've cleaned up. What's not to like? We'll see you tomorrow.